friends. It's Liv here. Welcome back to another episode of Six Figure Certified, the podcast. I feel like I haven't been here in a while. I hope you all missed me. I have been, I don't know what I've been doing. (laughs) I've been letting the other brilliant ladies of IGC run the show, literally, and that has been amazing. I just have never felt like it was valuable to hear only one person's voice. That's why I think one of the greatest values of being an IGC is that we have so many trainers and so many leaders, leaders in business, leaders in entrepreneurship, marketing, sales, coaching. And I never wanted it to be the Olivia show anyway. So despite my Leo son, I do not want it to be the Olivia show. I do not believe that working in a vacuum or learning in a vacuum is that helpful. So I hope that you have been able to get some other perspectives, learn some new things, and that the team has been supremely supremely supportive of you because I know that anytime I take a few weeks off from the podcast, it actually feels very, very supportive to me as well. So it's a win-win. If you've been following us for a while and you know kind of the vibe and the style of IGC, you know that we are very much a community-based business. We believe in working for yourself, not by yourself. We believe in creating the thing that you wish existed in the world. And for me, part of that was having other amazing women to lean on, to both give and receive from. And I guess you could say we created just that. And if you're not in IGC, part of IGC Coaching School, Six Figure Circle, anything like that, now is the perfect time to stop sitting on the sidelines and join us because March, whether you're listening to this or not, it still matters, but in the Six Figure Circle, our membership community. We are focused the entire month of March on money mindset. And I did not plan this because I like alliteration, although I really, really do like alliteration. I just feel like March is the perfect time to talk about money. You have, you know, hopefully worked out some of the kinks of the new year. Spring is all about growth and creation. If you're into astrology, we're approaching Aries season, which is fiery, go-getter, that kind of energy that we need. I always joke, but not joke that the best, most lucrative seasons in business for us are Aries season and Leo season. And I don't know if it's just the fire vibes or what, but we love it. And this is the perfect time to talk about money, making money, changing your money mindset, improving your money mindset, improving your relationship with money, falling in love with money, taking a bath and hundred dollar bills, whatever you need to do to fall in love with money, even though money is not, you know, I mean, Samantha, our director of sales always says money is not an emotion. And that's true. Money is just money. It's a resource. And it is one that you can absolutely make more of. You can get your hands on a lot of it, or you can stay in lack around money and ultimately suffer, which sucks. And We have a lot of great episodes coming out uh, this month, especially in relation to money. One of them, we're also going to be talking about this shift into what we say is more money in the hands of women who know what to do with it. But we've also have some research. We have some guests that are going to be talking about the fact that actually more money is going into the hands of women. Good women who have money, the economy is changing. The world is changing because of this. And all that to say, it's an amazing time for all of my ladies to get the bag, okay? Secure the bag, activated. If you're anything like me, we didn't kick off the new year so great. I'm just gonna put it out there. That's a, that's a conversation for a different episode, but here we are, March. Happy new year, baby, happy new year. We're going after it now. So I wanna talk in this episode about money and money mindset. Here's the deal. You have to work on your money mindset if you want to make money. I'm sure there will be people who disagree with me. I don't care. Disagree with me in my DMs on Instagram. I'll fight you on it all day. But if you have a bad relationship to money, if you think money is the root of all evil, if you get weird heebie-jeebies when people talk about money, you got to fix it, okay? I had bad money mindset forever. I just thought that I was destined to be poor. And then I realized I didn't want to be poor. And I have no problem you know, shouting that from the rooftops at this point. I remember when I was a public school teacher, I had a mentor. She was the principal. She had been the principal at the school for, gosh, years. I believe she ended up getting fired from the whole teacher performance pay bullshit. But she said to me once, she said, Olivia, you don't have enough money to worry about the problems in the school district. She's like, you have enough money to worry about getting your kids to pass these state tests. She goes, 
this is, a, I'm paraphrasing because this was like 15 years ago or more at this point, but basically what she told me when I was complaining about having to drill and practice on these standardized tests and how it wasn't fair to the kids and they needed other types of support, she said, that problem, I don't have enough money to solve. And I will never forget that because it made me feel like such a loser. It made me feel like such a loser. And then it, it also started making me realize that if I didn't have a lot of money, I wasn't going to be able to create as much change in my life or in my community or in the projects that I was the most passionate about, any of it. And yes, it kind of sucks. You know, maybe it would be easier if we all like made the same amount or like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there was more, you know, equity, but the reality is this is what we're handed. We are handed this type of economy. We live in a capitalist society. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules, but I'm also not going to get, let me watch my language. I'm also not going to get screwed over because these rules exist and I live in this world. Okay. Again, you can agree to disagree, but I have just found it much more empowering, much more motivating and much more satisfying and fulfilling to recreate my relationship to money and actually learn how to make the money that I needed to be able to have the life that I want. Because at the end of the day, nobody gives two shits about, you know, you struggling, right? Like maybe your family does, but you are responsible for you. You are responsible for the life that you create for yourself. So again, I decided to take that into my own hands many years ago and ultimately teach women how to do that today. Because I don't know, it's like you only live once, but that's not really why. It's just because life is too short. Life is too precious. There's so much that you can support change around. There's so much you can experience. There's so many generational curses you can break when you have the resources to do so. You can't convince me that there's anything noble or honorable about being broke. So let's talk about how to get unbroke. And it starts with your mind. So First of all, most people listening to this are coaches interested in coaching or starting a business, growing a business in the entrepreneurial space. And I would say, I think according to our last thing, like 80 something percent of you are women. So that's who I'm speaking to. If you're outside of that little niche, it's okay. And I hope, I think it'll still hit. So the first reminder that you need to know is that any fears or uncomfortable things that you're probably thinking about this conversation, useless. They're lying to you. They're, they're irrelevant here. The reality is that there are many six, seven, and eight figure service-based entrepreneurs in every single niche that are probably making significantly more money than you and me, but selling a very similar and maybe even worse product. I have told you, I believe on this podcast before that I found someone on TikTok who charges you five grand so she can help you name your baby. God, I, I mean, it just blows my mind. And I love it. I love it because to me, it's not annoying. And like, oh, how could she charge that much? And why would people pay that much? Like, they must be so rich and annoying and blah, blah, blah. I don't think like that at all. I think, goddamn, first of all, I will name your baby for $5. But I, I just love it. And it just shows me that there are women out here who are passionate about something and charging a high price for it. I don't hate that for us. I don't hate that for us at all. There are also people, and we have probably know some of them, but we're not here to talk shit, who are probably selling a shittier version of what you have to offer. Ugh, we're going to have to put an E at this episode. I'm sorry. It is a Friday. It is the first day of March. And, you know, say la vie. But there are people who are charging more. And I, I mean, in some cases, it's not going to be a, a very good experience. It's not going to be as good of a service. I don't know how many famous people have sold products and they could sell them like crazy because they had influence and they had money and they had connections and they have, you know, a following. And then the product is trash or the service is trash. Like, so I say that to you to remind you that it is a hundred percent possible if you are really great at what you do, if you are educated, especially if you're coaching, please get a credential for the love of God and the world. You can, you can make a lot of money, especially if you're really good. I hate those like hit it and quit it businesses where it's like you see a celebrity, for example, and they launch this product and, you know, maybe they make bank, but then they can't launch it again because everyone actually hated the product or they got a lot of returns or whatever. Like if you have a really great, excellent product or service, that is not going to be your experience. Hello, longevity. We love that. So first, you need to understand that there are people selling what you want to sell and making more money than you. 
why is that? It, it could be a lot of reasons. If you want to have a business assessment, we'll pop it in the show notes and I'll give you one. But the reality is it, it it's your limiting beliefs that are blocking you from having that level of success. It's saying, but someone else already does it. Okay, there's a Wendy's, a McDonald's, a Burger King, a Popeye's, a Zaxby's, all within two blocks of each other. Everybody's doing the same thing. You just have to do it different and better, better for your people. But let's break up a couple other ones. Every person on the planet, this may be another one of your negative beliefs around money. I just love these call, out, call forth episodes. Every person on the planet isn't broke. Everyone's not broke, actually. There's quite a bit of money in this big, beautiful universe that we live in, and we cannot assume that every person is broke, okay? We can't assume that people are not going to be able to pay for what you have to offer. If there's any part of you that's like, uh, it's not worth even posting, or it's not worth doing this because nobody has money. No, that's simply untrue, and it's actually disrespectful that you assume that. I think it's rude. So... Try this instead. Write out a list of 10 amazing outcomes of working with you and then ask yourself, would you pay for that? Would you pay for that outcome? If you knew and you were really grounded in the value of what you have to offer, would you pay for that? Would a person save up and pay for that? Think about it. Every person is not broke and every person has the ability to become extra resourceful to get what they want. We know this. We know that, you know, in sickness or death or accident or injury, people come up with a lot of creative ways to get support. I have seen women move out of dangerous situations in the on the drop of a hat and they scrounge up the money to get it. Hopefully our clients are not in these desperate situations. I'm not saying that that's what needs to happen, but people who truly see the value in the in the transformation, in the outcome of what you provide, will figure out a way to make it happen eventually. I'm not saying now. I'm saying eventually. You stand in that value. That is your job. Your job is to not forget that it's valuable. And then, of course, communicate that. All right, next thing. Kind of goes with the, this one, but the, if you have this belief that you must continue to lower your price, false, lowering your price is not going to change anything for you if you lack the confidence to sell. It doesn't matter if it's $40, $400, $4,000, $4 million. If you are not a 1,000% sold on the value of the investment, people will lose confidence in you. Okay, so you have to be able to scream it from the rooftops, how much it costs, whatever you're selling, and you have to feel so freaking good about it. Any inclination of like, oh, I'm not really sure. Like, I hate that when people say this. Stuff, like, I don't really know. Do you think it's too much? Like, well, now I do. Now I literally do. I literally think it's too much because you put that, you put that morsel into my brain now. So you have to do away with lowering your price. It is honestly, and over a decade in business now, it has been easier to sell higher ticket programs. Hands down, I can show you P&Ls for the past decade. It has been so much easier to sell high ticket items than anything low cost. That was for me working as a one-on-one -on -one coach and working inside of IGC. Why is that? Because I know and I am so confident in the fact that the real transformation and the real outcomes, the real long lasting outcomes come from a higher investment. They just do. You can go, we're, we're creating this new offer that's completely free. It's like IGC free is what I want to call it. You can go through that whole thing. You're going to get so much out of it. Are you going to make six figures in your first year though, by just going through that free course? I don't, I doubt it. I doubt it. It's just different. It's different energetic. It's a different energetic investment. And it's also obviously when you invest in a higher level course or training and it has a live component with actual people helping you, actual accountability, not just a bunch of recordings and no human interaction, you're going to have a way different outcome. And faster, faster. You can create a business over time without support, I'm sure. It's just going to take you a lot longer. And who has time? Literally, life is too short and too precious. Hi, it's Kalia, IGC coach training grad and six-figure certified coach. I know you're here listening to these incredible stories of successful coaches and wondering, when will it be my turn? I'm sure you entered this year with the goal of finally stepping into your purpose. And there is no better way than enrolling in IGC's internationally accredited coach training program. Enrollment is open now and it is your turn. 
So take the first step by going to innerglowcircle.com forward slash call right now and book a free call with me. Your six figure certified story starts today. So next thing, this is another one I hear all the time. It's just a negative money mindset that's stopping you from making any money is that you kind of have this weird thing where you're like, am I being annoying? Am I being too salesy? Am I being too pushy? It kind of just makes me think of that thing where it's like, if I'm too much, go find less. Yeah. If people think you're really annoying, they weren't going to work with you anyway. The thing about any type of sale or, or money transaction is that it really comes from building a relationship. So if, if they're finding you annoying, then the relationship is just not working anyway. Trust me. Personally and professionally. But if you you are speaking to your ideal clients and you are following up with them and you are selling your offers to your ideal clients. I am not talking about Becky from high school, unless she, of course, is your ideal client, but you know what I'm saying. You are not annoying them. You are inspiring them. At this point, if I'm confused about what you sell, meaning you don't post about it enough or you don't share about it enough or it's not clear enough, I'm annoyed with you because I don't know what you sell and what you can offer and what I can buy from you. And I don't, if you don't follow up with me, if I inquire about something even worse, I need you to push me. I am going a million different directions any given day. So these are just some reframes around this whole, like, I don't want to be too annoying. I don't want to be too salesy. If someone thinks you're annoying, they're probably not going to buy from you anyway. Maybe you'll get one sale from someone who thinks you're annoying because they either pity you or they're spying on you and they want to see what you're doing. But those are the exceptions. Those are who cares about those sales? We want the good ones. We want the clients who love us. We want the people who we can actually change their lives. We want all of that good stuff and they are not going to find it annoying. Also, this is just another thing around like money. And especially if you're selling a service that maybe isn't like a requirement necessarily for people, but what you need to truly embrace and understand is that people pay more for things that make them feel good than things that they truly need. Let me say that again. People are actually willing to pay more for things that make them feel good than things that they really need. For example, I need an oil change, but you want to know what would make me feel better? A couple margaritas with my girlfriends. So I am going to put a dinner date on my calendar before I'm going to put an oil change on my calendar. This is just a silly example. But you know it's true. Maybe you're more responsible with your car than me. But you can make your own example where this might resonate with you. But people want to feel good. People pay for things that they know are going to give them a result and make them feel better. So you need to ground yourself in what result does your service or product create? And is this going to make someone feel better? And then price accordingly. Think about these other things. There's so many like luxury items that people buy all the time. And in some way, I've said this before, but if you if people aren't going to pay you to solve the problem, they're going to pay someone else to solve the problem. And it may not be, you know, coaching or consulting services or astrology readings. Maybe it is a night out at the bar. Maybe it is a new outfit or a trip or a Chanel bag, because those things may make them feel better and they can easily see the result because they've been there, done that before. Well, yeah, actually a vacation made me feel better before. So instead of buying life coaching with you and actually seeing a long lasting result, because I'm confused about what results you offer because you haven't really followed up with me and you haven't been super clear about it, I'm going to take a vacation instead. Vacations, cosmetic surgery, clothes, handbags, beauty treatments, whatever, are solutions to people's problems when they want to feel good. Your offer also may be that, but it needs to be communicated that way. And you need to be 100% certain that in working with you, people will feel better and they will create that result for themselves. Because in the in reality, some of these things, feeling better actually can also help you make more money. So we think about it that way. Like if you're selling a service that's going to help increase their confidence, maybe you're a confidence coach or you're a stylist or you you know, do t- some type of, I don't know, even clarity can build confidence, anything like that. When someone feels better about themselves, what are they able to then do? ask for the raise, get a promotion, move cities, go on a date with someone, whatever it may be. Like you have to be able to see the result beyond the result. That's my point. And you have to be so sure of it. Don't 
don't think about like, well, what if they don't get that result? Yeah, what if they do? And what if you thinking that what if they don't is the problem? So what if they do? What if they do show up to every single call? What if they do do all of the work in between their sessions? What if they do increase their confidence by, you know, how will their life actually change? These are the kind of things that you need to focus on in order to get over any of the weird vibes you have around money. And you have to remember that you are not selfish for wanting to be paid for the work that you do, the service that you offer, the products that you create. It is not selfish. Someone, if you listen to this, I feel like it's someone I saw. They posted, you think you're annoying, but I got 30 texts from Fashion Nova before 7 a.m. or something. And like, she's still going to buy the thing that she wanted from there. Right. So like, what is my point? Like, you have to just get over it. Big companies are over it. That's why they're big companies. People in the same niche or industry as you that are making more money are over it. That's why they're making more money than you. And listen, everything that I say to you, I say to myself too. We have this major competitor in the coach training space. And I am always like, God, she just, everything with her is a higher level. And in some ways it's like, what is it? And then in other ways I'm like, oh, it's because she is willing to go deeper, go harder, go further, go, I mean, invest more, be more. I don't know. I can go on and on, but to me, it's like, she's showing me what's possible. So instead of looking at this as like comparison or feeling bad, look at it as like the thing that I want is possible. And I know this because someone else is doing it. The thing that I want is possible because someone else is doing it. And if you're sitting there with like a totally crazy product or service that you've never seen before, and you're like, no, Olivia, no one else is doing it. Even better. Get your butt on Shark Tank then. Like even better. You're in an even better position. Okay. So I don't know if this episode was all over the place. I am mildly all over the place today, but I wanted to kick off March talking about money, talking about money mindset, creating some major shifts. Hopefully something that I said in here makes you stop beating yourself up, comparing yourself to others, or just feeling downright shitty about your business. When in reality, there is so much possibility. There is so much potential. There is so much opportunity to create money. It's only a matter of getting out of your own way and getting out of these doom loop thoughts that you're having around money or selling or what's possible for you as an entrepreneur. You have to become a little bit delusional. You have to become so obsessed with your service and the value of it and the people that whose lives you're going to change that you don't even see all the other crap. And again, this is a message for you and it's also a message and a reminder for me and for our whole team. External results are not the only thing. We don't always have control over the external results, but we always have control over the thoughts that we allow to flood our mind. And so my my ask and my request of everyone listening to this is to start flooding your mind with thoughts about money that are actually going to help you that are actually going to help you make more money. I need a lot of really, really wonderful, amazing, ethical women of integrity who are loaded. Can you imagine all of us just get together and like literally change the whole world? I'm so excited for it. And then we can just chill and like homestead. And, you know, I'm about to get some backyard chickens. It's a whole nother story. But we have to take care of ourselves and the things that are really important to us first. And so I need you to go secure your bag and start with your mindset, okay? I know this episode was quick. I think I was, you know, on level 100, but that's the vibe. Happy Friday. Go get a margarita and make some money. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.